Okay, so now that we've talked about the horizontal asymptotes, we're going to talk about the vertical asymptotes. If you remember your picture uh, of what a rational graph looks like, um, back from chapter one, it looks something like this. You've got your axis, and then you've got your equation, or sorry, your uh, graph actually coming in here, and it usually had a vertical asymptote. So we've already talked about having a, a, a horizontal asymptote like this. And so your graph would look something like this. You'd have, I'm um, sorry for bumping the camera here. So you'd have something that does that, and then you could have something that does this. And you can also get other ones with multiple um, vertical asymptotes, and we'll get into that here in just a second. But if you remember, you'd have ones that would get really, really close out here and really close out there, but it'd also get really close up here and really close down on that asymptote, that vertical asymptote. So we're gonna talk about why that is. Let me erase this real quick. Okay, so if we bring up an example and we can talk about it, I'm going to talk about um, this equation right here. We're going to have 1 over x squared minus 16. Okay, so now, first of all, to graph this, and that's what we're going to be talking about um, mostly, is to graph that. Here's our graph. Kind of not very straight, but that's okay. And now, let's apply our three rules that we had. This, the top, the numerator, the degree of the numerator is zero, and the degree of the the bottom numerator, the <laughs> the denominator is two. And so we have one where the top is less than the bottom, or the numerator, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the 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 top, the denominator. Wow. Sorry, guys. Now. That says that our asymptote, our horizontal asymptote, is going to be right here on zero. So I'll put that horizontal asymptote in there. Now we need to know where the vertical asymptotes are. Now, why do we even get vertical asymptotes in the first place? Well, it happens because we cannot divide by zero. And so in in our case here, we've talked about the end behavior of this function. We said it's going to get closer and closer to zero as we go this way, and closer and closer to zero as we go that way, but somewhere in the middle, because this is a fraction, there's going to be a place where the bottom or the denominator, the denominator will equal zero. And because of that, we cannot, we will get that asymptote because there you cannot divide by zero. So in this case, we need to figure out when this equals zero. So well, that's easy, just set it equal to zero. X squared minus 16 equals zero. Well, we can't just do that, so we need to factor this, and we say this is actually a perfect square, so we say, um, not a perfect square, but a, a square with a plus and minus. So it's minus four, 16 goes into four, uh, is its root is, uh, square root is four, so it's like this. And we check, so x times x is x squared, negative 4 times 4 is 16, and then you have a negative x and negative negative 4x, and on the outside we have a positive 4x, which then gives us those the middle term cancels. So now because these are multiplied together, we say that either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero, because if one of them equals zero, then that will cancel the other one out because anything times zero is zero. So um, if this is equal to zero, then we'll know. So we set that equals zero, and we say, well, that minus the four over, and we say, um, actually, sorry, add the four over, so we get plus four. So one of them is x equals four, and the other one is x plus four, and we subtract the four over, so we get negative four. So this says that the bottom, the denominator, is going to be equal to zero when x equals four and x equals negative four. So we'll put those asymptotes in. So there's our negative four, and let me get my asymptote color out. So that's going to be our vertical asymptote there, and then we need the others. One, two, three, four. Not too well to scale, but that'll work. Let me draw that, it's not very straight. So now we've got our horizontal and our two vertical asymptotes. So that's the first two steps. Get the horizontal, then you get the vertical. So we've got those done. Now we need to start plugging in some points. 
Um, the first points to plug in that are the easiest are to find where your horizontal, sorry, where this graph will cross the x-axis if it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And also where it crosses the y-axis. So to do this, we say when when does our equation equal zero? So that's going to be a little bit different than this. This we set only the denominator. Now we're actually setting the whole thing. So we're going to say 1 over x squared minus 16. Does that, do you see the difference? This is only the denominator to find the asymptotes. This is the whole thing to find the, where, um, where it crosses the x-axis. So to solve this, we take the bottom and multiply, um, or the whole thing, times by x squared minus 16. And we multiply this side, x squared minus 16. And what happens is you get this times that, which is going to be 0, equals, well, this times this is going to reduce down to just 1. And 0 does not equal 1. So that means it never crosses the x-axis. There's no place that it actually crosses the x-axis, so that's easy. So that eliminates and tells us some information there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do, um, so this is the, maybe I can do some labels here. This is checking the x-intercepts. This is checking the vert asymptotes. Now we need to check the y-intercepts. The y-intercept. Because um, otherwise it wouldn't be a function. So the y-intercept, we simply say when does x equal 0? So that's 1 over 0 squared minus 16. So one, uh, so this is the y inter, inter C, P, intercept. So 0 squared is 0, so we get 1 over negative 16. So that says that when x equals 0, the y intercept is negative 6, 1 16th. So that's really close, but not actually to 0, which makes sense because here's our asymptote. It's not actually going to touch that. Sometimes it does cross, but today it doesn't. So in this example, it does not. So now we've got, uh, we plug some points in, we figured the, some things out. Now we need to know the other things. And we call that, uh, what, what's happening, I should say the other things. Uh, what What is happening is, uh, we need to know what is happening on this side of the, this vertical asymptote, what's happening between them, and what's happening on that side. So all we need to do is plug in some points. So what is the first point here? So this is actually going to be negative 5, and this is going to be 5. That's all we have to do is plug in something that's going on over here, and we can kind of just stick a probe out there and see what's happening. Well, we know that it, on out here that it has to either be on the top, because it can't cross this, or below. So really all we're checking is if it's positive or negative. We don't actually need a number because Brother Piper, to, to actually draw an accurate graph, you would need an actual number. Um, but in this case, we're not, um, he's, all he requires you is to do the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Um, you don't have to do all the other points. Now to draw a super accurate graph, like what your calculator does, or a computer program, it actually does plug in all the points do -do 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 along the way and then it makes that picture for you. But we only plug in a couple just to get the, the general notion of what the graph is going to look like. And if we want an exact graph, then we can use some technology. So to plug in a 5, all we need to do is, I'm going to slide this over away for a second and do our math real quick. So our equation was actually um, 1 over x squared minus 16. Now we need to plug in, um, like I said, a negative 5 and a 5. So here's our negative 5. 1 over negative 5 squared minus 16. So, maybe I'll write that a little bit better. That's going to equal 1 over 5, negative 5 squared is going to be 25 minus 16. And 25 minus 16 is, um, if it, these are both, if that was 15 then it would be 10, but it's not, it's 1 less, so that's going to be um, 9. So 25 minus 16 is 9, so we have 1 9. Now if we do the, that means that back here on our graph, 
that this negative 5, when we plug a negative 5 in, we get a positive number. So I'm just going to put a number right in here. Now let's do our negative number. Oh, sorry, a positive number. So a positive 5, do 1, positive 5 squared minus 16 equals, again, well, positive 5 squared is still 25. So that's still going to be a positive number, which is 1 ninth. Slide that back up. So we come up here and make our dot. So actually, at this time, since it can't cross this, we know this is going to get super close. It's going to come from here and gradually get a little bit bigger. And then it's got to actually come down like, if I could draw straight, come down like this. And we know it's going to go through that point. And the same thing over here. It can't cross that, so it's going to come down and do something like that if I went through our point. <laughs> Sorry, it's not super good. Um, again, we're just going for the, the, the gist of the picture. Now we need to know what's going on in here. And we know that it's right here negative, but sometimes, if you remember from your pictures, you could get ones that look like this and kind of do an S-curve and cross through there. So we need to know, does it S-curve through there, or does it go down like this, or maybe it comes down like this, and it can't go like this, remember, because our X-intercepts don't exist, there's no such thing. So we know that it always has to be negative. So actually, at that point, we could do and draw, draw our parabola like this. It's not actually a parabola, but something that looks similar to a parabola. Because really what it's doing is it's coming from this asymptote, this vertical asymptote, and then it's going to stick to that vertical as or that horizontal asymptote, and it's going to come and then stick to this vertical asymptote. So it's not really a parabola. Uh, perhaps you might draw something that looks similar to a parabola, but it's really not actually a parabola. So um, there's that, but let's check it. Let's make sure, let's plug in a couple of numbers that are just going to be easy, and then we can check just to make sure that it does indeed do that. So let's just pick two other numbers that are on the inside of that graph, which would be something like um, negative 2 and positive 2. So let's do that. And it's actually going to be the same thing um, that we had here. If we get um, whatever answer we're going to get because of this square, so maybe you can't see that, because of this square, you're actually going to get um, whatever it's going to be symmetrical. So whether it's um, your neg negative and positive 5 are going to be the same thing um, in this case, or what we're trying to check now is negative 2 and positive 2. So let's just do one of them. Let's do the positive just because it's easier to think sometimes than positive. So 1 over 2 squared minus 16. So uh, 2 squared is going to be 4, and 4, let's see, or maybe write horizontally instead, equals 1 over 4 minus 16. So now that's going to be 1 over 4 minus 16 is negative 12. So we know that this is a negative number. Now if, now let's just mentally check this negative. If we put a negative in here, negative squared is still going to be positive, 4. So that's still going to give us the same answer for both of them. So we can we can verify, and we, as we have, that this is going to be a negative 12th, and this is going to be a negative 12th as well. So that shows us that this is actually a picture of our graph. So to recap, you need three, uh, there are four steps, let me see here, there are five steps to graph a function. Actually, yes, let's do that now, and then we'll talk about two more things. So we need three things to graph, sorry, let's just number them and I'll tell you at the end how many there are. Okay, you need your horizontal asymptote. I'm just going to put ASY, and you, to find your horizontal asymptote, then you need to find your vertical, B, T, sorry if anything is spelled wrong, find your horizontal asymptotes, then you find your vertical asymptotes, then you find your x-intercepts, and your y-intercepts. Then number five, you find, you plug in points to determine the orientations for all the pieces.
and that's how you graph. So you need those five steps. The, ne the last thing is simply a discussion real quick about domain and range. Our domain, meaning what can the x's be, we've discovered that it's going to be negative to positive infinity. And because of that, our domain is going to be negative to positive infinity. But it cannot be negative 4 or positive 4. So we would say that it's negative to positive infinity except for negative 4 and positive 4 in this case. A range, well, this is going to go to positive infinity and this is going to go to negative infinity, but we got this, excuse me, we got this horizontal asymptote here. So again, we have negative infinity to positive infinity except for this right here. And that is going to give us the domain and range of these two things. Then uh, the next video will be how to, we're going to graph a um, oblique to see that our horizontal asymptotes are no longer horizontal, but they're oblique asymptotes. So um, again, when we do that division and, and get that line um, for when the numerator is degree, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. And we'll do one more graphing video.